Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'll be showing you how to get a world-class metal mix in absolutely no time whatsoever using some of my favorite modern plugins. We'll be going over how I use the Archetype Nolly in conjunction with the Archetype Gojira, in conjunction with the brand new Gecko Drums Cali Cabs, and of course, my company's brand new release, the Grove Bass. Before we move on, I would like to thank Stephen Rose and Anthony DiGiacomo for providing this amazing track and actually programming the bass for us immaculately. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and check the links down below to actually find all of the products I'm speaking about, as well as Stephen Rose's other music. Alright, so we're going to begin by loading up the Archetype Nolly, followed by the Archetype Gajira. So it's going to be a very novel way of using these that you may not have thought about before. Nothing, nothing like rocket science, but uh, we're going to go back to the Nolly. We're going to kill the amp, the EQ, the cab section, and the post effects. We're just going to have the pedals. Then we're going to go back to the Gojira and kill the pre-effects, the pedals, the post EQ, the cabs, and of course the post effects. We've just got, we're combining the Nolly's uh, overdrive, so overdrive one right here, with the uh, 5153 emulation in the Gajira. This is a combo that I loved using in real life. I loved using the TS808. Uh, I'm not sure if it's an 808 or an 820 that they're modeling, maybe a TS9, but whatever the classic Ibanez Tube Screamer sound with the EVH 5153, absolutely love it. So let's combine these two. So we're gonna start with the amp head itself. Now, because we don't have a cab sim, it's gonna sound absolutely terrible like this. All your white noise dreams have come true there. So we're gonna pull up the Cali cabs now. And this is going to make things sound a lot better. We're going to start with the guttural cab, of course, with the, the ancient and venerable SM57. We're going to pull up the massive cab just underneath them. We're going to take a listen. I'm going to balance the two mics out against each other. So, nice. Right, so you can hear it. Good start, right? And we're going to bring in the other mic underneath. Yeah, get us some of that KSC, get us some of that old Black Dahlia murder stuff going on. Two uh, Mesa oversized cabs from two very good vintages, of course, with our classic favorite microphone, mine and Nolly's, the SM57. So that's that. That's the uh, Cali oversized right there. So we're going to combine that by dialing the actual 5153 to start with. So let's do that. So it kind of behaves like I would expect the 5153 to behave. Um, many of the settings actually sound pretty good at noon. Uh, we can start about there. I'm going to pull the master back though, I think. Yep. From what I can tell, the master controls the amount of saturation going into the power amp. Don't quote me on this, but that's what it sounds like to my ears. And we're going to dial the presence, depth, and of course the level is just the master volume of the amp. You can get some of that really nice oversized cab thump in there if you want. All right, as far as naked amps go, that's pretty good. Maybe about there. That's usually where I tend to have the amp hitting in real life. I'm going to boost into it using the overdrive now. So, drive all the way down, of course. We don't really use the drive as part of this. You really get that nice mid honk out if you get that push into the amp. Get that nice natural compression and saturation. The mid range really helps the notes pop, especially on very fast music like this. We need a lot of compression in order to keep the notes in the forefront. So if we A-B it with uh, the overdrive on and off. It's just nice and thick, you know, kind of gives it that extra boost. Maybe it sounds a little bit less impressive than having the whole full range cab going by itself, but trust me, the overdrive is going to help you when it comes to the full mix. Now we're going to apply this to both guitars and spread it out wide.
getting that beautiful early to mid 2000s kind of low mid saturation in the tone absolutely brilliant so the next step from here is for me to clean it up maybe a little bit across the frequency spectrum kind of show you what i've done the cali cabs fortunately don't require a lot of work and props to nolly because these speakers sound absolutely immaculate you can tell this is the tail end of a Many years long speaker search, if not decades long by this point, given that we of course met on the old sneak board where we were both searching for these tones nigh on 20 years ago now. So let's take a listen and see what small EQ moves we can do in order to clean the tone up a bit. So what I'm doing here with the EQ is filtering up to about 106 Hertz. That's all the low end high pass filter 18 dB per octave. You can jog this around yourself, get the amount of sub low that you want. Obviously the less sub low on the rhythm guitars, the less it conflicts with the bass and the kick, the mix sounds cleaner, but the more wimpy the guitars sound by themselves. We've got another dip at about 225 Hertz, which is one of the main resonance zones of these old Mesa cabs. So that is pretty much a natural thing. It works in concert with the Pro MB. Now here we have a slight 2D cardboard mid cut at about 730 hertz ish, uh, only about 0.35 dB. It's a very sh uh, shallow, kind of wide, not not a very big cut at all. It's it's really inconsequential in the grand scheme of things. Now big one here is about 2.2K. We're taking out 2.6 dB. This is the kind of honk that tends to conflict with drum transients, drum attacks, and of course vocals. If you've got vocal heavy material, you're going to be wanting to dip out some of this stuff when it comes to the actual raw cabs. Now we're also dipping out 4.3K. Uh, 4.3K is a little bit of a, a harsher resonance. It's closer to that sort of a 5K hump that the V30 speakers used to always intrinsically have. You more or less always have to take something out around here when it comes to a V30 speaker. I've not found a single occasion where that isn't the case and it tends to kind of help the tone sit in the context of the mix and conflict less with both the cymbals and the vocals, of course, as well as the drum attacks. Now, beyond that, we have the classic low pass filter, 18 dBs per octave at uh, 10.6 kilohertz. Now, it probably sounds a lot more muted to you with the EQ processing on. That's because the volume is dropping. I haven't compensated for the volume dip. And of course, the tone is a little bit cleaner and leaves a lot more room for the low end. This is going to make a lot more sense once we kick Grove Bass in. So let's move on to the next phase of this, which is, of course, Andy Sneap's classic trick, the low mid-band compressor. You can really hear it catching those palm mutes there. You can see it's only kicking in on the very worst of it. We're not we're not abusing this thing. It's just there to catch any of the dynamic cab thumps that we otherwise wouldn't be able to catch. So let's fill in the gap now with Grove Bass. Grove Bass, of course, opens up like this and kind of sounds like this in its raw state. So just the uh, the raw DI sound. Now, instead of mixing this thing, one of the great things that Simon and I have done is actually mixed it under the hood. So you simply click on the distortion setting. Choose the amount of humanization. Get some nice velocity humanization in there, of course. Anthony has programmed this to use the entirety of the fretboard. As you know, with Grove Bass, we've sampled every single note along the length of the entire fretboard. So, of course, a note down here will sound very different to a note up down there, right? So it's very, very, very cool, the kind of tonal variance you can get if you actually use the four string articulations or the position knob accurately in order to um, function as a virtual capo. Now, one of the important things to showcase here in the actual MIDI roll when it comes to Grove Bass is this. I want you to take a listen. One of the reasons this section sounds so realistic is because not only have we used four strings in order to use the notes on the correct place on the fretboard, but we've actually got articulations to control pull-offs and hammer-ons, and that's something that we sampled individually. So you can do perfect, realistic hammer-on pull-off articulations. Of course, programming slides from anywhere to anywhere on the fretboard with uh, consistent, realistic energy decay across that movement. And of course, we've also got a bunch of other things such as tapping articulations, of course, the four string, which lets you program it anywhere that you want on the fretboard and uh, a bunch of other things. This is one of the reasons that it melds so well with the guitars. So let's take a listen to this in context of the mix with the guitars.
can nestle the bass back to kind of function as it would have back in the early to mid 2000s where the bass levels were very tight and controlled. You can do much of anything with Grove bass. You can even move it to the bridge section here where it has a little solo. And you can even change the tone for that section if you so wish, go back to OD. Or clean. One of the great things is because it's been sampled by Simon Grove, it actually sounds like him playing. I'm always impressed by it. Anyway, that is how we use Grove Bass in conjunction with our Archetype Nolly and Archetype Gajira for a great mix here. So let's just tailor these two to one another towards the end of the song here. There we go, a little bit more drive and a little bit more compression on Grove Bass to really fill in the mid-range. Absolutely love it. Let's listen to it one last time. Just the guitars by themselves. Nice full 5153 boosted sound. And so on and so forth. You get the point. Well, I sincerely hope you all enjoyed that demo of some of my favorite modern plugins. It's absolutely crazy to me how quickly you can achieve the kind of sound that we used to spend years chasing back in the early 2000s. Of course, I've been around for a very long time doing this now. So to get the kind of sounds that we were chasing with real amps and real gear in such short order and be able to pre-produce demo and even write your next record to this level of quality so quickly absolutely blows my mind. Make sure to subscribe for future gear reviews, run-throughs, demos, and of course, new plugins from Submission Audio. And until next time, I'll see you all later.